Hey folks, in this video I'm going to show you a new quick way to build a React and Spring Boot application. We're going to build a full stack to-do application using a Spring Boot Java backend, a React and TypeScript frontend, connected by the Hilla framework by Vaadin. So let's jump right into code and see how we can do this. All right, so here I'm in my terminal. I'm going to use npx to run the Hilla CLI. I'm going to run init, uh, pass in the React parameter, and we're going to call our project to-do. So once this finishes, what we're going to do is we're going to go into that folder, so cd to do, and then we're going to open it up in an IDE. I'm going to use uh, IntelliJ uh, IDE, but you can use any any IDE that you prefer. So once this opens up, we can go ahead and take a look at what we have. Um, all right, so let's load the Maven project. And while that is going on, let's go into the actual project and look at the POM file. All right, so if we look at the file, we can see that we have a Spring Boot project and we have some additional stuff here like the Hilla framework. Since we are building a full stack application, I'm gonna add a database here. We're just gonna use an in-memory H2 database for this. And then I'm gonna add the Spring Boot data JPA uh, dependency so that we get Spring Data and JPA. So Spring Boot Starter JPA. Let's see if we can find there. Yep, there we go. We can remove the version information like that. Okay, so if we go back into the project here, you can see that we have two interesting parts here. We have the source folder, which includes our Spring Boot application. And then we have a front end folder here, which is our React application. The way we start both of these is by running the application, uh, the Spring Boot application from here. You could also run it through Maven if you prefer that way. What you see happening here is that running the Spring Boot application not only starts Spring Boot, but it actually starts a front end build tool here, Vite, and that's going to compile our front end assets and uh, kind of live reload stuff as we, as we code. So the first time we run this, it'll take a little while. And once it's done, we'll have this kind of simple to view application up here. And that's something that was generated by that starter. Now, we are not going to use any of those views. So I'm going to simplify the application a little bit. But before we do that, let me just create some more space for us here. All right, so in our React application, you can see that we have an index file, we have a index.ts that initializes the React application, and then we have a routes file uh, so he'll uh, already set up a React router for us. We're not going to use any of these views that it generated, so we can just go ahead and delete those and create one new for ourselves. And this is going to call, be called to do view.tsx because we are using TypeScript here. And we're going to export a function called to do view. And to do view will return some JSX. And in here, we will wrap everything in a div and we can create an h1 just say hella cool to do like that all right so we can still see the the build is failing because we have all these routes that are uh trying to load stuff that we don't have anymore so let's map the empty path here uh, to our new to do view component so we'll do element is equal to to do do view like that and then we can delete much of what was here from before. Now, of course, if you're building a more meaningful application, you probably want to keep a lot of what's there. Okay, and the reason this is failing because we're going to the about view, which we don't have. And if we go to the root here, we can see we have our hello cool to do. All right, so the way I want to tackle building our application is start. let's start on the back end. We're going to create a data model, an entity for our to do. We're going to create a repository so we can access them from the database. And then we're going to create an endpoint, which is something uh, that Hill uses to connect uh, the client with the server. So it's essentially like a REST endpoint, but with type safety. So let's jump into the application package here, create a new Java class to do. And to do will be an entity. So we'll annotate this with a entity, so JPA entity. Entity like that. Uh, what's going on? Add Spring Boot start. I thought we already did, but sure, go ahead. All right, so we do that. Then we need to add a ID, otherwise it's going to be angry. So we'll do a private long 
ID. Then we'll have a private string for the task. And then we'll have a private Boolean for the done state like that. For the ID, we're going to annotate that with a ID annotation. And we're going to add a generated value like that. So uh, we can let uh, JPA take care of generating the values. I'm going to create two constructors here for us. Uh, first one will be one taking in a task just for convenience. And then JPA requires us to have a constructor that takes in no parameters, so just a no arg constructor. And then finally, I'm going to generate all the getters and setters that we need. All right, so that takes care of our data model. Pretty simple, simple stuff. Uh, the next thing we need is a way to actually save and uh, get these from the database. So for that, we're going to create a new interface called to do repository. And this is going to use spring data. And we're just going to extend from the JPA repository. Let's hide the sidebar here. Uh, pass in the type of the entity that we have and the type of the ID key that it has. And with that, we are now ready to create our endpoint. So the, that's going to be the code that we use to actually, or the API that we use to connect to the server from the client. Going to go into the endpoints package here, delete the stuff that was generated by the starter, and I'm going to create a new class here called to do endpoints. Endpoints are, like I said, similar to REST controllers, that they are an API that we can use to call the server. The difference is that they are type safe. The way we define one is by adding an endpoint annotation to our class. And then I'm also going to add anonymous allowed, meaning that anyone is allowed to call this. Normally, only logged in users would be able to call this. Then let's auto wire in uh, this repository that we have. So we have the to do repository. We'll call this repository. And then we will create a field for it. And once we have that, we can actually start creating our API. So what I need from the server is one method for fetching all the to do's, one for adding a new to do based on a task name that I have, and then one method for updating a to do. So let's just start going through these one at a time. I'm going to create a public method that returns a list of these to do items. And we can call this find all. And what find all will do is it will just return uh, return what we get from the repository find all like that. Good. All right. So next one will be a method that returns a to do. And it will be called add. It takes in a string uh, for the task that we want to do and returns what we get back from calling repository.save with a new to do with that task. All right, so just be sure to kind of return this newly created to do so that we can display it in the client. And then finally, we'll have a another method returning a to do, which will be update. This actually takes in a to do and returns what we get from calling repository.save with that to do. All right, good stuff. So now we have a endpoint with all these methods that we want to call from the client. I'm going to build the project, uh, which will make those available to us in TypeScript. So let's see if that works. Uh, something's not happy. Maybe it's still running. All right, so there we have it. All right, so we will go back to our to do view here. And what I want to do now is call the backend to get all the to do's that we might have there from before. And then we uh, need to store them somewhere. And for that, we're going to create a state, we're going to create a constant state uh, that is for the to do's. And we will also have a set to do setter for that state. And we're going to use the react use state hook for this. I'm not going to go through how uh, state and hooks work in react. So I'll leave a link in the show notes if you're not familiar with that. Just uh, understand that we get a 
state that we can reference and a setter for setting that state here. Because we're using TypeScript, I'm going to define the type here to be a to-do array. And you can see that we actually were able to import this from this generated folder. And we can see that the type here matches our uh, Java object, and we didn't have to do that. So anytime we make a change to that Java model, this to-do uh, type will get updated in our front end folder as well. So we have full stack type safety, and we'll have full stack uh, autocomplete, which is really, really nice. Okay, so with that, we now need a way to actually call the server. For that, we're going to use another hook, the use effect hook, which allows us to do uh, run things that have a side effect, like calling the server in, in this case. It takes in two things, a function, which is the actual function to run, and then an array of dependencies. So anytime anything in this array changes, we want to rerun this. In our case, we don't want to rerun it. We just want to run it once. So we leave the dependency array empty. And in here, we will call our to-do endpoint to find all. And then when they uh, get back to us, we will call set to do's. All right, so let's take a look at what we just did. We called the server through this method. Uh, instead of doing a REST call to a URL, we're calling a TypeScript method. Under the hood, Hilla will create a REST endpoint to call uh, for this, but we don't have to care about where that URL is or anything. We can call this in a type safe manner. Now, the other thing to note here is that we have a red squiggly line here on our to-dos, and that's because Java and TypeScript handle type safety a little bit different. So in Java, pretty much anything can be null, and in TypeScript, nothing can be null unless we specify it, that it can be. Now, I'm going to go into my endpoints folder here and create a package info and say that this should be a non-null API. So essentially what I'm telling Hilla here is that I'm not going to return any null values from my backend code. And by doing that, we can really simplify the TypeScript generation here uh, because we don't need to check everything for nullability. All right, so we can see that the app built here and the squiggly lines went away. Now, of course, we don't have any to do's here that we could show because we don't have a way of adding to do's yet. So let's do that next. For that, I'm going to create a new uh, state here for the task, and we're going to bind that to a text field. So again, let's create a new constant here for the task and a setter for that. So set task, that'll be equal to use state with an empty string to start out. So now that we have the state that we need, we now need kind of a small form for this. So I'm going to create a small div and this div will then have a text field, and it will have a button. Like I said, Hilla comes with components built in, so we don't have to actually go and search for third-party components uh, that we can use. Give this a label, add, and let's use a theme on this. So we want to use the primary variant of this button like that. I'm also going to use uh, some utility classes that we ship here. So I'm going to uh, use class name here. And then I'm going to say that this should be a flexbox and it should have a small gap between the components here. Likewise, I don't like that the entire view touches uh, the browser here. So I'm going to give a class name here with padding medium like that, just to give us a little bit of breathing room here. All right, so we have the state here. We have a text field that we want to bind it to. So we'll start by binding the value to the task here. So whatever the state here is. So if we change the state, that should always reflect in the type uh, in the text field. And likewise, we are going to add a on change event listener here. So whenever it changes, we want to update the state. So for that, we're going to add a event listener and call set state. Uh, so sorry, set task, and we're going to get the targets value. So the target is the text field and the value is the value of the text field like that.
Okay, so now that we have the actual task in our in our state here, we want to add a on click listener to our button, and we're going to call a add to do function. We're going to use the ID to create the function. And in here, what we want to do is we want to call the server, call this endpoint that we created. Uh, where's that endpoint, we want to call this add with a string. So we're going to go in here, and we're going to turn this into a async function. And here we are going to call to do endpoint dot add. And then we are going to pass in that task. Now, if you if you recall here in our endpoint, we return the to do. So we want to capture that on the client here. So we'll have a constant called saved, which will be equal to what we get back from here. And this and every other call to the server is going to be an async uh, call. So we will await the value there. And if things go well, if we have a saved object, we can do something with it. What we want to do with it is append it to our state, append it to our list of to do's. The way we do that is by calling set to do's, creating a new array with all the previous to do's and then appending this newly saved object to that. And then once we're done with that, we can clear the task by just giving an empty string to that. Okay, so now we have a way of adding to do's. Let's try it out by milk. And by clicking add, we can see that it disappeared from here. Um, so something may or may not have happened. Uh, certainly we got to here, but we don't yet have a way of displaying all these to do's. So let's go ahead and do that. So below our form here, we're going to go ahead and map over all the to do's. So we're going to take the to do's map over them. And then for each to do, we're going to return some uh, JSX, I'm going to create a div for uh, for each to do, and we're going to have a checkbox there, which will be the to do's done state. So we'll say that the checked value should be equal to the to do's done value. And again, here, we're using TypeScript, so we can actually use autocomplete to see, see the properties that we have. And then we'll have a span, which will be the to do's uh, task. And because we're mapping here, uh, react wants us to define a key, which is something unique for each to do. And for that, we can use the to do's ID like this. All right, so let's save, let's see if that shows up. Sure, by milk, by eggs. All right, so that works. Now what we want to do is hook up this checkbox so that we actually are able to save those changes back to the client so or to the server, I should say. So right now, if we check these, refresh, we reset the state because we never persisted it anywhere. So for that, we are going to add a new listener here. So on, on check changed, we get an event. And what we want to do is call update to do, we're going to pass in the to do and then the value from this event, which will be in the detail object, and the value is a Boolean because this checkbox. Now, of course, we don't have this uh, function yet. So we're going to use the ID to create it again. And the to do will be of type to do the value we want to call done. And then for the actual uh, server call here, we're going to again use an async function. And we're going to call that endpoint, but this time with that uh, update method here. So we're going to pass in a to do object, and we get back an updated to do object. So again, we'll use the same same pattern as above here. So we're going to do a const saved is equal to await, and then we're going to call the to do endpoint. And we're going to update. And we want to pass in a updated to do object. So for that, I'm going to create a new object. And here I'm going to destructure the to do that we passed in, and then I'm going to pass in the done state here. So that overrides whatever it, uh, the previous value was. Then if we have a saved object returned to us, we can go ahead and update our to do state.
So we're going to again call set to do's. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to map over the array that we have. And we're going to look at each existing item and see if it matches if the ID matches to the saved one. If so, we're going to swap that out and leave all the other ones uh, be. So we're going to take the to do's and we're going to map over them. Let's call this uh, exists thing just so we can keep track of things. And then we can see that if the existing ID is equal to the saved ID, then we'll swap that out. If not, we're going to just return the existing object and not touch it like that. All right, save again. And if things worked, we should be able to check, check off some of these, refresh and see that we actually still get that state. So we're actually persisting these to our database now. All right, so there you have it. In just a few minutes, we built a full stack uh, to do application using a Spring Boot Java backend, a React TypeScript front end using the new Hilla framework from Vaadin. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. If you have ideas for new videos, let me know as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.